Hello and happy holidays once again my good friends. And today we have for you another Merry Vector Christmas tutorial. And this one is being made mostly in part because at the World of Webcraft, David Scoop said great Christmas graphic tutorials there. He was talking about the ornaments we made. And he said just an idea for a video, have you thought about designing a Christmas tree in fireworks? So that's mostly why we have this tutorial being created right now for this Christmas tree. It's just a really cool effect and I thought you guys would dig it. And you can get a lot of workflow design tips in fireworks by watching me produce this thing in real time. Create new fireworks document. Mine's going to be 1000 wide by 550 high. My resolution 72 and that's good for the web. Good enough. So I'll press OK. You can change your canvas color down here but I'm going to be working on a white canvas. And go ahead and Hold down on the rectangle tool, if you happen to have the rectangle showing, hold down on that and you'll see all the different shapes you can draw out. I'm going to grab the star and I'm going to drag and draw that out right there. Then I'm going to grab the points and make sure it's only three, so I'll have a perfect triangle. See the points? I'll just make sure I'm down at three. And I'm going to go to the scale tool. I'm going to use this triangle to be the form, really the guide for my tree shape so I can draw my ribbon in more easily and it'll help me visually stay within a nice triangular shape. And you can make that any size you need it just by scaling it. And if you want to see those little tiny uh, tooltips, you can go up to view tooltips and make sure that's selected. Then you'll see those numbers that you see when I drag things, those little numbers on the side. See if I drag this up, you see those numbers? The width and height, that's the tooltips enabled. So you can make yours fat or skinny whatever you want. So I'll grab it and I'll put it right in the center. Dead center. Now throughout the video you might see me zoom into my canvas like such. Zoom in and out. And I'm doing that by holding down control and mouse wheeling. Alright now I'm gonna grab my pen tool. I'm gonna click down right here on this edge. Then I'm gonna come up just a little bit to give it an angle. Right about there on that edge. And you can choose any angle you want and you can make your ribbon shaped any way you want. I'm going to go right about here, click down, and then just kind of keep those two lines parallel, the angle on those two lines, as parallel as you can with your eyeball. Then we're going to give it a green fill, maybe a little lighter green right there. I'm going to take that black edge off. Now let's draw the next one. I'll start right about here, and at any time I can move any of these points, so it's really not detrimental if I put something, a point in the wrong spot or I draw something in the wrong place, I can just move it around, it's no big deal. And I can make these as tall as I need them. As they're going up, I'm going to gradually make them just a little bit less high. Okay, we can start connecting some of the back parts of the ribbon. So you can start at any point that you want along these four points here. One, two, three, four. So I'll start at this bottom one and I'll click let go, click down let go here click down let go here and then click down let go here and then just connect the shape to finish it off and we'll make this a little bit darker green and I'll send that to back control shift down arrow key and the reason why it disappeared is because my triangle has a white fill and I'll just make it no fill so I'll draw in the others real quick here I'll click down here then I'll click down here click here let go, click here, let go, click here, let go. Then give it a fill to match this color. No edge if it happened to have a white edge or whatever. And then send to back. Control shift down arrow key. We can adjust those points if we need to. And we are. This one here is sticking up a little bit. So we'll fix that and everything. Alright, let me get my last one in. Click here, let go. Click here, let go. Click here, let go. Click here, let go and then finish off the shape. Give it a fill, no edge, and then send to back. Now let's take a look at this one up here. We'll make it a little bit smaller by grabbing the sub selection tool, and bringing these points down a little bit so it's not so tall, but still keeping an angle on it. Then we can adjust the points on that one. Bring that down a bit. Bring this over one. And just make it to where this one's not showing behind the other one. And at this point, you can just move your triangle if you want. Get it out of the way. Adjust these points to where everything looks real nice and sharp. 
this point on that one in the back needs to come down one here, maybe one more, maybe this point come down a little. Okay, now let's shape the bottom. So we'll grab the pen tool, let's click down at this point right here, click down here and let go, and then make this one just go straight up. Click down, let go, and then click down here and let go. And once you have that piece drawn in, you can send it to back by pressing Control Shift Down Arrow Key. Let's grab the pen tool again. Next shape is going to start right here. So click down at this point, let go, then maybe come to right about here. Click down, let go, and give it the angle that you want. I want mine right about, right about there. I'll click down, let go, click down here, let go, and then click down here. And this one, I'm going to give it a solid color of this lighter front color. So you can see what that does. Let's move it over one. Right there looks good. Okay, now we'll put one more last little fold down at the bottom here. So let's click down here at this point, and right about there, and then angle it back up just a little bit. And then connect it at the bottom. Go to your pointer tool. Highlight it, control shift, down arrow key, we'll send it to back. And we have no more use for this triangle, so I'm just going to press control X and get rid of it. Okay, now to make this look a little more genuine, we're going to put some gradients on it. And we're going to make sure that we unite or combine some of these shapes. All your bright shapes, all of your front facing ribbons. Highlight all of those by holding shift and you can select them and highlight them all together. Once you have them all highlighted, you go up to Modify, Combine Paths, and Union. Now they're all one piece or one path, but don't move it. Leave it right where it is. Then you're going to highlight this back piece, this back piece, this back piece, this back piece, and this back showing piece. And once you have all of those selected, you go to Modify, Combine Paths, and you're going to union those as well. So now you have two different paths, one for the front and one for the back. So we can get these gradients now more easily now that they're all one piece. So let's select the front facing ribbon, go to its fill selector, gradient, and we're going to select cone. Now cone is the best option for this because our shape happens to be triangular. And I'll show you what I mean. Right there, if you put it right there, it doesn't look very authentic because it just looks like there's a, a nipple or a point coming straight out at us right at that point right there and that makes no sense or even if you put it up there that makes little sense but what you can do is put it at the very top where your triangle would be and then you can rotate this guy around like that but what you do is you go into the cone gradient color and then you move the green in so you see that see as I move the green in that'll allow me to get more of a tight gradient line and then I can just wheel it around like that to get any light direction that I want and where it's white I really don't want it white I want it to be a very you know, let me go into my color selector right about there that light green very light green okay instead of white and I can do the same thing to the back go to its fill gradient cone Move it up to the top where it would be at the very tippy top point of your triangle. And you can move this around just like we did the other one. But this one you're going to make dark where it's light. And where it was dark, we're going to make that a little bit lighter. Or a very light color like that. This one, we're going to darken it. Make it a very dark green. Okay. Then we can bring in the bright green like that. And then you can rotate this to make it look any way you want. See that? You make it look like that. Or you can highlight again, rotate it around, make it a little darker like that. Whatever you want to do. But now it has a more authentic curvature to my ribbon in the front and the back. Or the front face of the ribbon and the back face of the ribbon. The back face would be, I guess, inside the cone. I'm going to use a dingbat font. So I'll go to my text tool. And I'm going to make sure, let's type in a couple of things. Let's make sure we can see that, make it a green color. And I'm going to change it to, and if you want to download this font, it's called WW Flakes. And it's all kind of cool snowflakes. So if I type in Q, 
W E R T Y I U. So you give me all kind of little designs for different snowflakes. And I can turn those into paths if I want. So it's not text anymore, it would be paths at that point, like any other shape. So I'll just get the one that I like, or one that I want to start off with, because you can change it up easily after you set the first one up. Like say for instance I have this one sitting here, and I want to press Control c Control v and make a copy, and then I can just change this to a, a D on my keyboard, or a J. But first you'll want to get the effect that you want, or gradients that you want upon these little snowflakes. And it looks like I have to move this point in. You see this one showing a dark edge on this edge right here. So I'm going to go to sub selection tool, highlight the back or the inner part of the ribbon, and move those in just a little bit. Move this one down right there. It looks like this one is a little bit showing as well. There we go. Now with this little guy, I'm just going to go ahead and change his fill color. Change the fill options down here. Go to fill options, gradient, and then change linear to radial or whatever type you like. And now you can have fun sprinkling those about. And if you happen to change any of these, like say if I put one here and I change it to that right there and I make it bigger, maybe 67. Just remember you have to change your gradient to match, okay? Like that. This one should come out a little more like that. You just sprinkle those about. Now you can just keep going through there with your snowflakes till you wind up with something like this. I just made a variety of sizes and chose different snowflakes. And this one is also part of the font and I thought it would be perfect for the top of the tree. So what I'm going to do is make a little ro more room on my canvas. So canvas size, I'll go to maybe 750. Okay. And now I have room at the top. So I'll make that a little bit bigger. Right about there. Put that in the center. And bring this down. And then make sure it's sent to back. If you have yours on the front like that, you can leave it on top if you want. Actually, that looks pretty good like that. Or you can send to back. Control Shift down. Yeah, I'm going to send mine to back. And now for the finishing touch is we'll put a little shadow underneath. So grab an ellipse and make it maybe around that big, like that, and you can just make this solid, this dark green color would work right there, and then we can go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, Blur it real nice, OK, and then bring the opacity down, right about there, and if that's on top of everything, make sure you send that to back, like that, and then bring it down and put it where it looks like it would be a nice shadow for that illustration. Okay, so there is the completed Vector Christmas tree. Hope you enjoyed that one, and hopefully we'll have some more Vector Christmas tutorials coming before it gets too close to Christmas. If you guys happen to have any requests, let me know. I was thinking about doing maybe some peppermint candy canes, uh, red ribbons, uh, presents, gift boxes, I don't know. So you guys just let me know what you want to see, and we'll bang it out.